First Class Fatherhood. That is where Alec Lace comes in with his popular podcast. And one of the most interesting was on a podcast. Alec Lace interviews high profile fathers from actors to NFL players with a vision to change the narrative of fatherhood and family life. What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood, a family made media podcast. The NASCAR playoffs are heating up, and I have got the pleasure of being joined today by one of the most exciting drivers in all of NASCAR. Joey Logano joins me on the podcast today. Joey Logano broke all kinds of records when he first burst onto the NASCAR scene. He was the Cup Series champion back in 2018. He drives that number 22 car for Penske. It's a big honor to have him on the podcast today. Get down there, smash that subscribe button, tap the like, and let's jump into it right now with Joey Logano on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father, Joey Logano. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. It's awesome to have you here. Let's do it like this. How many kids do you have? How old are they? I got three kids. Uh, the house is full. Like my oldest, Hudson, is four. Jameson is two. Those are my two boys. And we just had a little girl. She is uh, just over six months now. Uh, and that's Amelia. So we have our hands full in the Logano household right now. Wow. V very cool. Yeah, I have three boys and got the girl myself there. You going to try to even the score here with another one? Or are you all done? I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're, we're putting it on the truck. We're all, we're all done. It's <laughs> good. And uh, hey, listen, any, any more, you know, you can't have a pickup truck anymore. You know, I got a, I got a pickup truck. I drive that around every day. I can fit three car seats across the back. Uh, and next, I got to start putting them in the bed of the truck. So it's, that's not going to work out for me. So three, three <laughs> is the number. we're going family of five. All right. I like your style. If you could, Joey, please, just for the uh, listeners that don't know, hit them, hit them with a little bit about your background and what you do. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm a race car driver. I drive the number 22 Shell Penzo Mustang for Roger Penske in the NASCAR Cup Series. Uh, I've been racing in, in the NASCAR uh, levels for 15 years. And uh, that's my phone's ringing right now. Um, and so that that's uh, that's what I do for a living. I, I drive in circles and, uh, and and it's a pretty, you know, the, the balance just like for everybody, right? The, the work balance to, to family balance is, is always a, a challenge um just like for everybody right my, my job is a traveling job or we race from february to november every weekend uh, with one off weekend in there so as you can imagine we're going all the time um and trying to figure out races that i can bring my family to and still trying to balance that at the racetrack it's always a challenge it's always it's always hard um but it's something we figure out over time <laughs> Yeah, and obviously you've been crushing it on the NASCAR circuit for quite a while now. And if you could then, Joey, take me back to the beginning of your fatherhood journey. How old were you when you became a dad, and how did that experience change your perspective on life? Um, I was, uh, what was I? I was 28 um, when we had Hudson. And obviously that, that changed uh, a lot. And we tried having kids for quite a few years before that. Brittany and I have been um, together since we were kids. And um you know, we, we had issues getting pregnant, went through the whole IVF uh, thing, and uh, we finally were able to have Hudson. And it, it changed a lot immediately, but not as much as I thought. Like, I mean, it was it was still like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's different with guys to, to girls, but like it took me a minute to have that connection with Hudson like I have now. Like, like the first six months, it's like, OK, like he's crying. He's going through things. He's very colicky. I was like, Oh my God, what did I get myself into? It's the, the transition from zero to one kid, I think is the biggest transition because you realize that like, all right, life as I know it before of just going, doing what I want to do is now gone. And I have to figure this whole thing out. And, um, so the first six months were kind of tougher for me, honestly. Um, but now it's just, it's life and it's how I go through things and I love it. And you see how they grow um and their personalities and you know you just can't wait to get home right when 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 i have me the other day i got home from the race in daytona and i opened up the car when i got there opened up the door and and they're there daddy 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 yelling screaming jumping up and down like it's the best like that that's the best um it takes a while for them to get to that point <laughs> but it, it's been uh really special and it changed my perspective a lot because you're not just living for for you and your wife anymore you're living for these kids and it's really all about them. Um, it's all about how, uh, you know, you, you let them learn lessons um, throughout seeing what dad does, right? Like I, I think of uh, a lot of things just growing up with my dad, a great dad, 
but we never really sat down and had talks about morals or how you're supposed to do things. It was just learning by watching, right? Like learn by example. And that was the biggest thing. Like I, my dad was a, um, a, a very successful businessman, had a great garbage company, but I always saw him underneath the trucks. Like he, he'd come out a total grease ball. You know, he didn't have to be right. He's running the company. They had 60 trucks and he's in there grinding it out with everybody and sweeping up shop floors at the end of the day. Like he never told me to do that. Right. I, I didn't have to. I just saw him do that. And so I always keep that stuff in my mind now of how that's kind of changed my perspective and making sure that, hey, they're watching me. <laughs> they're watching every move I make, <laughs> whether it's on TV or not during the races. They're watching everything now. Yeah. So make sure you grind it out. But yeah, you know what? Really good stuff, Joey. And a lot of dads that I do have on the show, they will attest to that, too, and say like they were told about this monumental moment. They were expecting it to hit them right away. And then they kind of like they don't have that and they feel like something is wrong. Like, oh, my God, I didn't get this feeling. Everyone was told me I was going to get. And, and it's it hits people at different times. It, it's um, it, I know I had a quite a few NFL uh, Hall of Famers on the show. And one of them explained it to like, you know, when you first win the Super Bowl and then someone comes and sticks a microphone in your face, say, hey, what does it feel like to be a Super Bowl champion? And you're like, I don't know. It hasn't hit me yet, you know? And, and they kind of compare that to becoming a father as well. Like that moment didn't happen, but it eventually does come at certain times for everybody. It does. And I, I think it's, I think women have that connection immediately. I mean, the, the baby's been inside of them for 10 months. Like they're, they, they, they have an immediate connection. And, you know, for me, uh, especially with my boys to start, like it, it took a, a few months and now like, boy, I love the heck out of these kids. Like I love it. I can't wait to go home every day. I love spending time with them. I love how they're growing. I love having those talks at night with, with Hudson, especially he's, he's obviously he's four. So he's able to, to kind of communicate back and forth with me and, and start to learn what he's into and, you know, kind of share some of those same interests together uh, or, or at least learning whatever he's into. Like, I'm good with that too. And because you just want to see him smile and be happy. And I love that part of it. Uh, but it takes time to get there, right? It's like, you want it now, right? You want that connection immediately and be able to do that. But I've learned for me, at least it takes, you know, a year or so before like you start to see their personalities and doing little things, right? And and uh, and now, shoot, I, I Hudson and I, I mean, he's on his go-kart all the time and I'll ride the four-wheeler with Jameson with me, you know, or, or go on the tractors, like those type of things is what I enjoy. And naturally they see dad, so they enjoy it too. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah, so cool, Joey. And you mentioned uh, your wife, Brittany, and you guys were together since you were kids. What what was it like for you to watch uh, Brittany become a mom and take on that role of motherhood and, and the changes that brought? Uh, it changes the, dy you know, the dynamic of your relationship by a complete 180 right because you know before it's just the two of you and now uh you watch your wife you know become a, a mother and how that that responsibility changes um as soon as she becomes pregnant right you you, you see it like the the challenges of pregnancy for one i want no part of that that's <laughs> none of us <laughs> do lucked out as i'll say we <laughs> lucked out <laughs> i don't want to be anywhere near any of that pain or uncomfortableness or any of that but then you see how the, the preparation starts kicking in, right? You got to get everything ready. And my wife's great. She, she took care of all that. I don't even worry about it. Like I was working. I'm, I, I got to drive a race car. Like, I, I got to go to work. Like I can't, I can't handle everything. Um, she took complete control of all that. The way we run it even now is that like she takes care. She knows where the kids are going to go to school. She knows, you know, doctor's appointments, all that. And I'm just a help at hand, you know, I'm like <laughs> we need to go. I go, I go to work, I come home and I, and I, I help out and be dad and have fun. And, and she takes care of that part of our life. And we got a good balance between the both of us. Yeah, I sure. I'm sure it's got to be comforting too, that when you're nine months pregnant and your husband's a race car driver, you're not worried about getting to the hospital on time. <laughs> I was looking forward to that moment. I felt like that was the <laughs> one time that I can speed down the highway as fast as I want to go and have like a good enough excuse to not go to jail. Right. Like my <laughs> wife's having a baby, you know, like that's like the best excuse ever. It didn't happen like that for me. It just didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I know you mentioned a little bit there when you were talking about your father, but what would you consider to be Joey, the top values that you hope to instill in all your kids growing up? Um, well, I mean, you want them to just be good people, right? That's the big, I want them to work hard. I don't want them to take anything for granted. And, and that's one of the biggest challenges I think for me 
if I'm being 100% honest, my kids grew up in a different life than the majority of kids, right? You think about like, they're, he goes to the racetrack and race fans know my kids' names. And, and so it's very important to me to make them know that they haven't earned anything yet. And just because people know who you are already because dad's a race car driver and, and you get to go out on the stage with dad and be, do all this, this special access and people kissing my butt and kissing his butt just because, no, like I, it kind of bothers me and I don't really know exactly how to handle it yet but I'm very aware of it because I don't want him to be entitled into, or any of my kids to be entitled into something that they haven't earned. And that's very important to me. And, and I don't have the answer on how to do that yet, but I, it's on the top of my mind to make sure that they don't become spoiled little entitled kids. And that's a concern of mine. And, uh, and that's why, you know, Hey, he's going to have an advantage on in some things in life right? He's just going to, right? If he wants to go racing, he's going to have some extra pressures on him, right? He, Hudson is taking a interest in driving a lot lately. And now he's going to show up to the go-kart track as Joey Logano's son, not Hudson Logano, every other, just like every other kid. And that's not quite fair, right? It, that, that he's going to have that added pressure because he's going to be expected to win because his dad's a race car driver, right? Like, just like an NFL player comes out with their son playing. Well, that guy's supposed to win because he's got the greatest coach he can ask for. A guy plays in the NFL. It's a similar situation. So trying to, to balance that with also people not treating him differently. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I don't know. I don't have the answers. I don't know if there's books written for that. I think you just kind of got to figure it out as you go. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I do hear that the same thing from a lot of just whether they're, uh, you know, successful actors, athletes, no matter what it is, that that does put that extra added layer of pressure on it for the kids that most other kids don't have uh, going into it. So uh, it's definitely a struggle. for. And, and, and speaking about you being the, the NASCAR driver, the race car driver, has becoming a dad, I mean, changed you as a driver or has it maybe uh, put retirement closer up the ladder for you? Has it has it kind of um, what's, what's been some of the challenges being a dad, being a being a driver? Um, I, I will say once you're in the car, there's no thoughts at all. It's because you, you have to be so focused because once you lose focus, it becomes dangerous. That's when the job is really dangerous. Um, but before that, yeah, I mean, the, the thoughts go through your mind of, OK, I want to make sure my car is safe because like the risk I used to take was just like I didn't think much of it. I was younger for one, but I didn't have the responsibility of my kids growing up without a dad. It's the last thing I ever, ever want. And so you weigh out the risks a little bit more before you get in the car to make sure your safety gear is correct. To make sure like, like even just doing things away from the track. I think twice before I, I drive a particular car down the road, right? I, I'm an, I love antique cars, right? I'm, I'm a car guy. So, so you imagine I'm always driving something different a lot of times. And so I, I think twice before taking, you know, an old car down the highway now, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, I, I just think about that stuff more. And um, does it make retirement, you know, sooner i don't know yet um i i got a long ways to go i'm only 32 so i got a long ways i can continue racing um and i want my kids to see me work right I go back to that lead by example if i retire what example am i really showing them right i'm going to spend an amazing amount of quality time with them which would be great but i also want them to see dad go to work and set an example of how to um not only you know, win races, but doing it in the correct way, how you stand up for yourself, how, how you lead your team, right? I, I want them to see all that as well. And so they have to get a certain age before they can really comprehend a lot of that. Um, so that's in my mind as well. Yeah. Very cool. What about, what about Joey, that first ride home from the hospital? I know for me as a dad, that, that was very nerve wracking for me. I was doing, you know, 30 miles an hour in the right lane. Did you do that first drive home from the hospital? Were you in the pilot seat there? When you, how was that experience for you? Of course, I was driving. Um, I didn't think <laughs> twice about driving there. I was thinking about what do I do when I get home? All right, that, that's where I was there. I, I, I drive for a living. I'm not nervous about driving with a kid in the car or by myself. I'm okay. But I am. I was really concerned. Like, okay, like, they're just letting us take this thing home. Like, it's just kind of like, like, we were in the hospital for a couple of days, right? You know the deal. And like, okay, like, just strap it in, huh? Like, 
okay <laughs> you get home and is there like instructions or like i don't know and um like i said that's where like to me my wife was just she was on it she's and she still is she's on all that stuff where uh you know i really don't have to be concerned about much she's she's uh even if she doesn't have it figured out, she seems to to ask all the right questions to, to get it right. <laughs> yeah, it's always surreal when you close that door at home for the first time and it's just the three of you now and you're looking at each other like, that's it. It's yeah. us. How you much know, do so- we feed him? You know, like, yeah. oh, he's crying. What do we do? I don't know. He's constipated. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I know they're young yet. Obviously, four is your oldest. But what, what, what type of disciplinarian are you so far, Joey, as a dad? And is that the spanker timeout guy? And is it different than the discipline style you grew up with? I think, well, man, all you have to go off of is what you, like, grew up with a little bit, right? And, like, okay. And then I, I think also you have to know your kid. And I think what I've seen, at least with, with the two boys so far, is that different things affect them, right? And, and Hudson, you know, timeout, eh, not a big deal. Spanking, he, he doesn't even affect them that much. Like, he's just like, yeah, and what else, right? Like, he's just, he's just that kid. Right? He's, he's Mr. Tough Guy. And, but fear of missing out, that's what gets him. That's what gets him. When everyone goes outside and has fun, and he doesn't get to have fun, that is what his trigger point is. So my point is, I think you have to figure out what, what is really the trigger point for each kid that's actually going to make a difference of, of being the disciplinary. Because, you know, there's times I'm just, I'm just like everybody else. I get frustrated. I get mad. I, the, the boys, they fight with each other. And I'm like, well, what you, why? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> you know, like, but it, it's kind of how you handle it. And, a, a bit of it for us was trial and error. Like, okay, this isn't working. We have to find a different way. Um, you know, and, and it's just different things, right? Like I've already noticed with Hudson, like he, he doesn't know how to lose yet. He, he, he loves to compete with others, but all he wants to do is win. And when he loses, it's like the, the world ended and he throws a fit. Right. And like, that's, I don't have the answer to that one yet. on how to do that because he's going to have to learn to lose. You don't win all the time. Right. Especially if you race, you lose more than you win. There's 40 cars out there. You think you're going to win every time, you know, so like that, those things uh, are, are going to be a challenge for us as we keep going with them for sure. Yeah, we, we do that here. We get that board game night going and it gets competitive over here. So uh, everybody <laughs> wants to win that clue game or whatever it is. So uh, we, we get a chance to see all that. What about as far as bedtime goes, Joey? What's the bedtime routine look like? Are you a storyteller, a lullaby guy? How does that kind of work out in your home? Um, well, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, we, we just, I mean, it's about eight o'clock and we start putting them down and it's, it's pretty quick. It's brush your teeth, wash your hands, wash your face, say your prayers and, uh, and we read a book and Jameson, our, our two-year-old, he, he's good with books. He likes books. Hudson is all about cars right now. And so I made the mistake of you know, he loves going for car rides and getting ice cream. All that was so antique cars is his thing too. He shares that love with dad. And so instead of lullabies, we read auto buy and it's a car magazine with a bunch of old cars in it. And every night he wants to read four or five pages and pick out his favorite car. And I pick out my favorite car and that's <laughs> what he wants to do. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. And then you, usually I tuck him in and we talk uh, about the day. Right. We kind of like the highlights and he wants to know what I did. And I ask him what he did because um, I don't get to be with them all day long. Right. And, and, and most people can't be with their kids all day long. Um, right? I got to go to work. There's times I'm gone for three or four days at a time. And and to me, the quality time at night, once I got him tucked into bed and I'll, I'll just I'll jump in bed with him and lay there for you know five or ten minutes and just talk. And I enjoy that so much. Um, and with Jameson, we'll get closer to that. Amelia, obviously, she's just a baby, so that'll take time. But I think that moment of being able to communicate with no distractions, lights off, and then just just shoot the breeze a little bit with your son. Like, that's that's pretty cool. That's fun. Yeah, awesome. And I, and I recently had uh, uh, Kyle Petty on the podcast here, and he was talking about the uh, Hot Wheels record that you guys uh, <laughs> broke, I guess, momentarily there. I don't think you still have the record, but how, when did that go down? Did your kids get involved with that, with the Hot Wheels and doing all kind of stuff like that? How did that story go down? 
Yeah, that that was a short lived record is what it was. But uh, we we um, I have a partnership with Hot Wheels and we thought it'd be cool to try to set the longest track record. And uh, Kyle Petty, obviously, is a friend of mine. Um, and he he came out and helped and, and Hudson helped help Hudson put the car on the track to, to win the to win the uh, record. And um, it was all great until a bunch of Boy Scouts beat us three weeks later. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. But, uh, that was that was kind of cool. Um, it, and it's funny now because Hudson will want to go back and rewatch the video we did with that. Uh, and he thinks that's cool. So, um, yeah, it, it's neat to see that that stuff. Right. And, and to that point, like you see him start to watch some of the stuff. There's bad stuff on the Internet, too, of me not doing the best of things on pit road after races. <laughs> I'm like, all right, like son, this isn't how you handle things. Like <laughs> learn from my experiences too a little bit when it comes to rewatching some of these videos. I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the difference today. Everything is online. You can't hide from it. You know, a simple oh, Google search of your name shows up more than you want it to. Oh yes. It's uh, we had a race earlier this year and I kind of got bounced around a little bit and, and I retaliated, uh, which, which is part of our sport. And I bumped the guy out of the way. I win the race. Uh, and then, you know, Monday Hudson and I, we have these crazy carts and we're driving around the street and we, we always kind of race each other back and forth. Well, he's like clobbering me. He's hitting me. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And then like, that's what you did. And I'm like, Oh, oh boy. <laughs> All right. Like, like, there's a little learning lesson here. You know, of, of, I think just thinking of like, there's always a lesson to be learned. And to make sure that you teach that lesson and the opportunities there. And that was one of them that day too. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. And obviously now I believe the, the, the playoffs are just starting here. What, what kind of, uh, what kind of goal, what's next for you here? What you got any kind of books in the making projects you're working on? What's next for you? What's coming up uh, for Joey Logano here? I mean, right now it's just about winning a championship. Um, right. And, and it's just continuing that balance of like we talked about earlier here is, is, is how do I be the best race car driver I can possibly be? Uh, with also being the best dad I can possibly be and being the best husband I can possibly be. And I can't say I'm a hundred at every one of those all the time. There's times that I have to be the best race car driver and maybe not the best dad, but what's helped me balance that is knowing that even when I'm being the best race car driver, my son's watching that and that's helping me be a pretty good dad, even though I'm not there in the moment. Um, and then there's times that, you know, I'm, I shut racing off, right? Like I come home at the, at the end of the day and I put my phone down and I'm done. I'm done. I want to be with my kids. I can't say I do that successfully every day, but I try really, really hard to do that. Um, to just be a hundred percent in every bucket that at the moment. And that's been my best way of balancing this. And it's been hard, right? But when the kids go to sleep, it's 100% with my wife. When the kids are awake, I'm with my kids and with my family as much as possible. When I go to work, I go to work. Leave me alone. I'm going to work. I have to be 100% focused there because it's not just a job. Like there is thousands of people counting on me to produce uh, my job. It's not a nine to fiver, right? It, it is something that people are relying on me for their bonuses. So I have to take that serious as well. So I just decided if I'm not doing it hundred percent, I can't do it at all. And so that's kind of how I separated it. Yeah. Well, really great stuff, Joey. And, and the last thing I want to hit you with here, I know maybe you touched on a little bit of it throughout the talk. Uh, I'd love to ask all the dads I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for that new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening? It's probably that right there. It's just whatever you do, do it a hundred percent. And I think your kids will respect that um right like it's if you're gonna go to a ball game with your kids be there be present be there 100 percent. you know be the great example of what a husband should look like um with your wife uh and be a great example of what going to work actually means um that it's not just a a, a job it's it that you know there's there's ways of how you go about it and just remember they're watching and listening all the time, all the time. And, and that to me is the, the biggest motivation for me right now 
And, and I guess that would be my advice is just to know that they're watching you and they're going to catch you when you're doing something you shouldn't be doing because that is the example. Your, your dad is what you is, is the hero, right? He's the superhero. No matter what your job is, you don't have to be a race car driver. You can be whatever you are. You're your child's superhero. Don't let them down. Right. That's, that's, that's what motivates me every day. Yeah. Very well said. I love the message. It's been an honor for me. I got to say, Joey Logano, you're a first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on first class fatherhood. Uh, Glad to be on. Thanks for having me, man. You have been listening to first class fatherhood. First class fatherhood is a family made media podcast please visit www.firstclassfatherhood.com or www.familymade.com to find out more details. You can order First Class Fatherhood advice and wisdom from high-profile dads on amazon.com or wherever books are sold. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Proverbs 22.6 tells us, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will never depart from it. God bless, and I'll catch you next time.